You know what I've always wanted to build? I've always wanted to build, as silly as this sounds, is a Murphy bed. And if you don't know what a Murphy bed is, it's simple. It's basically a cabinet that stays against the wall that is disguised as a cabinet, but this opens up into a bed that comes down. They can be a full-size bed, or a queen-size bed. I've never seen a king-size bed, but it's a perfect solution if you have a small living space or you have a spare guest bedroom and you have, you know, you don't want to put a futon or something in there. So, without wasting any more time, let's see if we can make a Murphy bed. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Keeps. All right, guys, listen to me. I gotta talk to you for a second. Hair loss. Listen, we have it, I have it. Let's just talk about it. Let's put it out in the open. But we gotta do something about it. Now, we're too busy to schedule these appointments, to go to these doctors, to get the prescription, to actually take the medication. I love what Keeps is doing. And here's why. Two out of three men, two out of three guys, experienced some form of male pattern baldness before the age of 35. That's insane, I'm 32 and I already see it. Take it from me guys, the best way to prevent hair loss is to get ahead of it. Start doing something about it before you start losing your hair. Do you know that before to get a hair loss medication prescription, you have to schedule an appointment to the doctors, go to the doctors, have these awkward waiting rooms that you have to be in. Not anymore, now you can visit a doctor online, get Get a prescription medication and have the medication be sent delivered straight to your door. No more weird, awkward checkout lines at pharmacies. Now you have the convenience of getting your medication on a regular schedule. And if you run out, they make it super easy to have it delivered to your door every three months. Keeps treatments typically take between four and six months to start working. So the sooner you start, the sooner you'll start seeing results. Now, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, make sure to go to keeps.com forward slash Mr. Build It, or click the link down in the description below to save 50% off your first order today. Now, let's get back to this video. Let's go. Okay, so here are the plans here. The premise that we're gonna be working on today is basically building the cabinet carcass itself. It's 16 inches deep. Sometimes you can make them a little bit narrower, but that's based off of your mattress. The height of it is gonna be the height of a full-size bed. That's the mattress we're gonna go with. So we're gonna secure these pieces together. Uh, you guys know me, I use pocket holes. Here's a small little Craig Pocket Mini, uh, 20 bucks. Okay, so whenever you got a big glue up like this, a big awkward piece, uh, and it's gonna be moving side to side. They sell these little, what are they called? These are from Rockler three quarter inch clamp it clips. Here's what's great about them, check this out. Three quarter inch plus three quarter inch, nice clean butt joint in place. I can secure it and we're done. All right, so to keep the sucker from swaying side to side, I'm gonna get a, get a piece on top here that's gonna secure to the wall, keep it from falling, and then I'm gonna secure another piece around, yay! It's gonna be kinda like my backboard, but that's also gonna keep it from swaying side to side. So I, uh, I tried figuring out the dimensions for the bed platform because we already have the carcass for the cabinet done. And the type of hardware that I bought, get this, they want the hardware to go on the platform then you build a carcass around it and close it. It's so, I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I'm frustrated because the kit doesn't show up till tomorrow and I want to get some work done today. So I'm kind of reverse engineering it. 
I'm gonna do the best I can do with this and hopefully we're gonna run into more problems. But um, long story short, if you use the kit that I use, it'll be the link in the description. Buy the kit first and then follow the instructions before getting ahead of yourself. Okay, so uh, again, reverse engineering this whole thing. The, uh, the, the legs part, when it comes down, it has the, the legs that flip over. So we need to create a little radius based off what they have online. So I'll take the old paint can, trace that sucker around, cut that with a jigsaw, and I think that should clear that. Now, the rest of the two pieces, these are the side rails. Uh, this is the foot part. So once I create my little radius cut, this will be there. And the last thing is this is the, the head part, basically of the mattress, it's seven inches wide. 56 inches, both of these, and then these are what? They're like 76 and a half based off of a full size bed. The uh, platform, basically done, I think. We'll find out when the hardware shows up if I did it right. Uh, and then now we're gonna do the slats that will go in here. The slats, they're not gonna have a reinforcement on the ground, right, like a normal bed would. Instead, we have to make our own structural support. We're gonna take one by twos, create an L bracket, and then secure it in, and obviously frame that in as well. Uh, that should keep it from bending down and messing with the front cover of this bed. So to build the carcass, the cabinet itself, it was two sheets of plywood, 120 bucks-ish with today's prices especially. All in all, my goal with staying and everything is to get under 700. Now you think that might be a little steep, but Google it. There's a lot of really expensive stuff out there you can spend almost like 2,500 bucks on. What the heck is going on? So we need to create the face of the Murphy bed when it's closed, right? The pretty cabinet side. So as wasteful as it sounds, we have to divide it in half. A sheet of plywood can't cover a full size bed, maybe a twin. Uh, this is one half, 29 inches wide, and uh, I'm cutting the other half. I will then glue it on pretty side out and secure it with screws on the inside. Super wasteful, two sheets of plywood with excess. I don't like it one bit, but hey. Boom. Okay, today is day three of building the Murphy bed. And guess what shows up today? That's right, the hardware. And the stuff that we're supposed to wait on to start building the thing, to follow the instructions the right way. It should be fun. Let's see if we're gonna cry on camera today. That'll be interesting. how detailed the instructions are. I mean, you got templates you cut out, you'll lay it against as long as you cut the dimensions correctly. It tells exactly where to make the holes. Solutions to the problem. Because the original instructions were made for this thing to be encapsulated tightly inside this carcass, 
we have to undo the problems that we did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pocket hole screws out at the bottom. I'm going to cut it exactly the width of the three quarter inch board. This can be unscrewed as well. It's not glued. I'll be able to stretch it wide, bring this panel or the, the platform in, and then insert these inch and a half uh, pegs into the round circular slots. Close it in and then put a new board on the bottom. Uh, that'll be a, a fun project. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is this work got it in. The bad news is screwed up another thing. These are supposed to be flipped vice versa because that's supposed to sit on the inside. So that one's supposed to be here, that one's supposed to be there. I'm not, I'm gonna save you the trouble. Watch this. And just like that, nice concealable legs. So the pattern for the exterior of this thing, it has to be kind of, uh, I don't know, interesting, kind of like a sliding barn door, right? It's like an art piece, especially how big this thing is. So the pattern that I'm gonna go with is, I'm gonna kick myself for doing this. Oh, um, it's, it's this X pattern. It's gonna give it a little bit, I don't know if I'm gonna do that many, but it's gonna give it a little bit more of that farmhousey feel. And then the cool part, I'm gonna paint it like a flat black with some gold, like bronze uh, I don't know, hardware. I, I think it'll look really cool in a room. Let's just get, oh, what are we using? Yeah, by the way, uh, we're using uh, one by four MDF, chop it up with a miter saw and uh, Brad nailing it on with some glue, of course. <laughs> Little tip when you do your own molding or trim work or anything like that, measure the outside corners, not the inside, that'll screw you over. So just kind of know the longest part to the longest part um, and then line everything up and always cut on the outside of your scribing line. That way, if it's a little too big, you can trim it. So uh, the angle that we need for these X's is like 46 and, or 47 and a half. And this miter saw only goes to 45 degrees. There's a quick solution that Tyler and I just kind of looked on the old internet web and figured out. If you cut one of your pieces to be just 45 degrees and you clamp it in place here, now anything gets moved on this fence line is just gonna be that much bigger. So we just moved an extra three and then boom, we got our dimension. At that point, we can just put our piece in here, create our cut and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. Bada bing, bada boom. So now we gotta do is use a little bit of a wood filler, uh, patch up all these things, give it a light sand, and uh, put a caulking inside of it. That will be nice and prime. The outside cavity with the exposed plywood of the cabinet, I was gonna edge band veneer, but we want to make it a little bit fuller, so I'm just going to do the old, good old fashioned classic and always faithful select pine one by two. And I think it's just going to give it that girthiness. Okay, so everything is cleaned up, everything is patched up, got our trim in place, everything's filled. Light sand, 220 grit, uh, maybe I think it's even 120. Lightly, don't take off your primer, and then we'll be ready for caulking and uh, what are we doing? Primer. Yeah, both. <laughs> Had a really fun time trying to clear this behemoth out of this garage, but we finally got it. We're gonna paint now. This is the ripe olive green that I've used it before. It used to be actually the backdrop of our podcast. Go check it out, by the way, if you haven't seen it. And then this is the Wagner uh, Control Pro 130. Haven't used it before. It's an airless sprayer, which I love. And the cool thing is you gravity feed it in here. Brand's big and new. Let's put some paint now.
we got this monstrosity in here. Uh, get some help. Camera guy Kyle really came through. Thanks, Kyle. Um, here's what we're gonna do for installation here. We need to cut off our trim board uh, to make it flush with this kind of flow so this can lean against the wall. Uh, I'm gonna make my markings, use a little multi-oscillating tool, get a nice, good, clean line, push it against, and then we'll prop it open and secure it into the walls so we can actually safely open it. <laughs> That's a tight fit. <laughs> okay, I think this is a two-person job in order to secure it because I think it's gonna start closing here. <laughs> You're probably wondering what's the deal with the 50-pound kettlebell. Um, the way this thing is set up that when the mattress is here, it could stay. If it's not, it goes up. So <laughs> that's just there to hold it in place. Check this out, watch this. <laughs> I have a kettlebell. <laughs> it's actually kettlebell. I don't know why I say kettlebell. I don't know things. There, now, let's get our mattress. In terms of the price on this project, 300 was spent on the hardware kit itself, and an extra three to $400 was spent on all the wood and edge banding and everything else that kind of came with that, as well as paint. So all in all, 700 bucks for a Murphy bed, not bad at all, considering some of the new stuff out there is between 1500 and 3500. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching yet another one of my videos. It means the world to me, it really does. I've learned a lot on this project. There's a lot of courage and sweat there. A lot of just problems that we had to figure out and solutions to issues. But in the end, I think it's gonna make us better builders and better people. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button and make sure you tap the notification bell. That way you'll know exactly when a video comes out. Not to mention the new house remodel projects that we're doing. They're gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure you like, comment, and share this video with your friends. Check me out on my social medias. All the links will be down in the description below, as well as the merch shop. Go snag yourself a shirt, help support this channel so we keep making these videos for you guys. Oh, and before I forget, the blog and the website will be down in the description below. Go check it out. A lot of plants and tutorials will be living there as well. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.